I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Dawncraft. Now today, after a crazy last episode, I'm going to be heading back to the workshop now that I have access to the cauldron. I should now be able to use the mixing cauldron to make myself a broom. Very, very fun. Now, one of the first things I need to do is I need to get blood in, into this cauldron. And that is going to be a, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, now, I am going to be using the polished blackstone and then a lava bucket. So now I should be able to access the inside of this. There we go. And I should be able to now right click a bucket of lava onto it, which I wasn't able to do before. Um, this interface is very different. But this should be the recipe. Um, I guess with this particular version of the mod, there's uh, this this wasn't finished, <laughs> I'm guessing, because in the newer versions, this this, uh, this totally looks different, way different, way cooler looking interface. Um, now, now that it's finished, you can see it is down there. I should be able to pull it out. I'm not seeing where it's at. There it is. It goes over to the right hand side. But now I have a blood sigil and there's still lava in here. And uh, I think that that actually needs to go out. This is where the sigil goes. And I'm pretty sure there needs to be a little bit of, there needs to be a little bit in there in order to get blood out, if I remember correctly. And we're also gonna need bottles. <laughs> uh, it's been a little bit. This will pull out the lava. So now we have bottles of lava. Um, there's a little bit of a problem with bottles of lava. I don't remember. I think they just disappear. But if they're in the backpack, they kind of stay. Um, now, I should be able to stand in this and you can see the blood fill up. There we go. And it's taking some of our health. And I should be able to scoop that up. There we go. Looks like I need just enough in there to get a couple of bottles of this. And that is going to be perfect because that's what we actually need in order to craft this stuff. Now, since there's not an interface over here to dump all of the ingredients, uh, which there is in the newer version, uh, we can just go ahead and uh, pop the cauldron. And that should empty the contents. Uh, there we go. Now, I've got to go back and I've got to craft a few things because I'm going to be making the mahogany broom. Now, it means I need to find a mahogany tree. Um, and I don't see any mahogany inside of this building. So I am going to have to look and hopefully find a mahogany tree out here in the wild. Now, I believe this tree right here, it has this sort of look. This is the willow tree that is specifically from Hexerai, which is what we were working towards. There, of course, are willow trees uh, that are from other mods in here, but this one has a very specific look. And we can see, yes, so long as it says Hex Hexerai, that's gonna be the logs we need. Now, I'm still looking for the other kind of tree. Now, thankfully, right next door, right next door to our swamp here is a jungle, a jungle biome, as you can see all of this right here. And this is exactly what I need. I, yeah, and it spawned right here on this platform, oddly enough. Um, but this right here is the mahogany. So you're gonna find mahogany in the jungle. Jungle willow is found in the actual swamp. So I'm just gonna harvest this up and then we can plant it anywhere. But yes, you definitely gotta find this in the jungle. That was something that I did not know until today. Now, surprisingly, this is quite simple to put together. I'm gonna go ahead and put the water in. And we need to supply this with a netherite ingot, two mahogany logs, a couple of uh, things of wheat, and then we're also going to need mandrake root. And what else are we going to need? Oh yeah, two bottles of blood. I don't, I don't know if it matters what order we put this all in, uh, but I should have my two bottles of blood right there. And this is going to craft together and make us a fire resistant broom. Oh, this is gonna be super nice. Now, this broom is pretty bad on its own, but we are going to add some things to make it a little bit better. There it is. And we can shift right click to open it up. And inside is a broom brush. Without it, it's just a stick, I need to upgrade this broom brush. And uh, we should be able to make these better brushes. So this is an enhanced broom brush. And these can also receive enchants. But to make this, we have to make the wet version, which requires all of those little herbs and, and, and different things that we get in the swamp. And uh, to get mandrake root, they come from the mandrake flowers. You, when you harvest, there's a chance you'll get a mandrake root. I think I have all of these at the base and we just use our regular broom brush, which we can also make, as you can see right here, if we wanna have multiples of them to keep with us. 
because it does take durability to fly. So I should have just about everything. Two buckets of water goes in here to make this nice and wet. And uh, let's see, let's look at our brush and then pull up the cauldron recipe and put them in. And there we go. So this is all the materials. I just did a, to, to do this quite quickly, you can do at and then hex array and then double click and it will actually highlight in your chest all of the items that are from that mod. Pretty useful for finding all of these things. But here we go. We have a wet enhanced broom. Uh, so we are going to actually need to put this in a drying rack, believe it or not. Now this is a herb rack. We're gonna probably have to go back to the base to make a specific drying rack. And the drying rack is made like this with just a stick and a slab. And there we go. So let's put that together. And we can throw this, these glasses, they keep popping off of my, uh, my guy. Uh, but yeah, we can put the drying rack up here and then we can put this on it. And as you can see over time, this is going to dry that out. And once it's dried out, we can put it in our broom and we will be off to the races and have a lot more durability. Um, and, and with unbreaking on this and mending you can put on it, it becomes pretty powerful. So while that was drying, I went ahead and got a quick sorting setup going for uh, all of our gems that we're going to be using here soon. Um, but our broom is now ready to go. Let's go ahead and grab this out. Now, I wonder, can I just directly enchant this? I've not tried to do that. And we do have 37 levels, so maybe we can directly enchant it? I hope. That'd be really nice. And yes, you can. You can put Unbreaking 3 right on it, um, which is great. We're going to need that. Now, Mending, of course, you're going to need potentially to get it from a Mending Villager. But judging by how Villagers are already working in this pack, that's going to be highly unlikely. And unfortunately, you can't even craft a Mending book like you can craft other enchants using ours. I have no idea why mending is one of the things not craftable, but I don't know. Uh, it's just a thing apparently. Now, another thing I would love to make is the broom netherite tip, and this will just allow us to be able to go through lava with our broom. But if we're careful, we shouldn't have to mess with lava. Already our broom is going to be semi fire resistant, which is kind of nice. But yeah, this is uh, something I would love to make that definitely adds something to it. But a Sentinel Shard is obtained from breaking a Sentinel Cluster or a, a C... Wow. Selenite Cluster uh, in Selenite Geo. It's found under jungles and swamps, which we haven't gone exploring under. Another tip that would be kind of useful is the waterproof broom tip, uh, which does say uh, allows the uh, broom to travel through water without kicking the player off for a limited time. It'll still kick you off, but it'll have a much higher time than <laughs> to do that, I guess. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the gold rings. These are actually kind of cool, and they make the broom look a lot more kind of Harry Potter-ish, I think. Now, remember I collected that lava? I've got to be quick with this. It runs out of time, but I should be able to... Can I not? Oh, I can't. Okay. Well, apparently in this version, you can't put it back in for whatever reason. There's no way to put it back in and it just disappears. Oh, I gotta get a bucket of lava then. All right, so let's get this all crafted together, right? Or maybe not. Oh, that's maybe oh, the reason why is because it has water technically stored in it. I bet that's why it wouldn't go in. Ah, man, all of the little weird things because of the interface not being finished. Uh, it's nothing on uh, Joe Fox for, for that, for sure. Uh, because this is an older version of Minecraft and uh, mods tend to progress towards the uh, the newer versions, right? And these older versions sort of get left behind. But there we go. So this will craft up the ring. And this is honestly just a cosmetic thing. I, I do like it though. So I can put that in there and put the brush in here. And now we have ourselves a broom. I just need to configure some key binds. Yeah. All right. So with the key bind set, we're ready to hop on. And as you can see, our broom moves. Now we can go up in the air. And then we can also descend. So our controls that have to be configured, well, that is the descend button, which I have bound to X. And that way you don't hit shift and well, fall to your death. Uh, but you can actually hit shift and you'll stand on your broom and your broom will sort of float, right? It'll, it'll act like a kind of like a boat in a way, uh, but we can pick that up and go from there. Very nice, very nice. And this allows us to have flight. I know it's not incredibly fast, but it is flight. And I wonder, yep, this does not help us speed up or anything. But the fact 
of us having some way to hover above the skies is just really nice. And making more brooms, making the more, more of the brooms, which is what takes durability here, it's really easy to craft those. Man, I'm so glad we got this set up. Even though we had to go through all of the trouble to get the witch quest working. Oh, this is, this is nice. And we can see eventually this will start taking durability the further off we go. Just having Unbreaking 3 really helps. And then making the enhanced broom brush gives us way more durability than the base brush. Now to pick it up. I just got to boop it a couple of times and we can now pick it up. Also, this does have a slot for storage. Um, there's actually a satchel that we can put, and there's also a coffer that we can make. Ooh, a coffer would be kind of useful too. It's sort of like another backpack, except the coffer is something you sort of have to place on the ground to access it. But yeah, that's definitely a thing. It, it's pretty neat. Oh, looks like there's a dousing rod to help you find swamp. What? Leaves change color based on if the player is facing a swamp? W what? That and jungles? I could have used that. Wow. All of these items that I didn't know about, but I know about now. Very cool. Now, I don't 100% know if this works, but if we rename the broom to Nipis 2000 and we actually get on it. Oh, it does retain its name. That's what I was hoping. Yes, and it does keep its name. I love this. So there is one last thing I want to make, and that is a sage burning plate. Um, so I have this back. We do have a little bit of lava in there still left over. And I do have some sage that is drying. We've actually been harvesting sh uh, sage for a while. I just wonder what the effects of this sage are. It doesn't really tell me what the effects are. Just that we can burn it, and it lasts 60 minutes, basically in a world. I, I just wonder what that does. Oh, I guess I can just look at the sage burning plate. It says right click with the dried sage bundle to place in the plate. Uh, while lit, it prevents mobs from naturally spawning in a radius of 48. Bundles will burn up durability over time. Right. Oh my, this could be really useful. Like, what if we want to loot like an underground area? We could just light a sage bundle and like no mobs will spawn within 48 blocks of this thing. I, I wonder if that works with spawners. I, I doubt it, but it would prevent natural mobs from spawning. So let's try it. Let's put this and prevent some mobs from spawning around our base. So we just light it and there it is. Oh, okay. So there's like, it actually gives you a display of the area that it is covering. Quite an area actually. Okay, so it goes all the way over here. So basically around our entire base is protected. Oh, this is so cool looking with like the smoke plumes everywhere. Oh, this is this is a really cool aesthetic. So this is really cool because you can interact with this thing by right clicking and you can see it says sage clouds gathering, forming a peaceful circle. And it's going to form a, like a circle in the outer area around the, the, the base. So it's not all in your face. Or you can just have it not do anything at all. Or you can see the sage clouds just everywhere, which I think is, is pretty neat. Um, or this one is says uh, gently cleansing the area and forming a circle. So this has the this does the inner and puts a thick circle in the edge. I do like the fact of having like an outer circle. That really gives you a nice visual of the area this is protecting. That's so cool. Now with my broom that I have, I want to experience the nether a little bit differently. So now I can actually fly around and explore a lot differently. Uh, this makes traveling in this dimension so much better. And look at that. The, this guy can't even keep up. Can't even keep up. Ooh, what is this? So yeah, that's an area we've already been to. We've already played around with those. So I wonder, can I now interact? Okay. How, what happens if I get hit? Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. I can just take them out. Wow, this is quite an experience here. Ooh, I might be better off being in first person. Let's be fair. So look at that. I, we found a fortress. Oh, perfect. Okay. So let's see if I can't maybe find somewhere to land safely. 
and plop down a waystone. Because this is kind of important. It's not very large. It doesn't look very big. That's interesting. But hopefully I can get down here and find a comfortable platform. Oh boy. That's not too crazy. Oh! This could be a lot more difficult than I thought. As the blazes are quite bad. Okay. Let's plop down here. Yikes. Try and get rid of this guy. Goodness. Wow, I'm going to end up dying. I need to turn the fire resist on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Yep, and we need to get down there somehow. That might be a little bit more challenging. So with our fire resist, it's actually not too bad. We're doing actually quite well. There's just a couple of zombies and stuff that we got to get rid of. There we go. Okay. I wonder if the sage would be really useful here. I bet, I bet it would be quite nice actually. Ooh, wither skeleton. Not just a normal wither skeleton either. I don't want to get hit by these guys and get the wither effect. I mean, I guess I could dispel it, which could work. All right, he doesn't know how to walk, apparently. Whew. And he dropped an iron backpack. I don't really need that, though. And that can actually cause us to be slowed, or supposed to, anyways. Aha, uh -huh, there's a chest. Huh. Mana regeneration? All right, so maybe being down here, this would actually be a good location to put a waystone. Oh yes, this is perfect. This is a hunt. Yeah, this is what you want. Like the blazes aren't bothering me. I'm more worried about these guys and the way the fighting works is I kind of have to get up close and personal. So a bow is still, still goaded here. Still the way to go. It is so loud though. So very loud. And these are the chests. Oh, this is protected by this guy. Come down here, sir. Okay. Or go down there. Whatever you want. Whatever whatever works for you. You know. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get rid of you. And that way I can get to that chest, which is probably has nothing in it, to be fair. All right. And you're down. Ooh, you dropped some interesting things. Ooh, okay, dropped a sword. Man, the sounds are just wild. Absolutely wild. Okay, so interestingly enough, I didn't get hit with a wither effect when I was just hit with the sword. So maybe it is viable. Okay, I did get... Okay, I did get withered. But I can dispel that pretty quickly. So it's not a huge deal there. Yeah, notice that. Interesting. And that'll also prompt... Oh, it's being protected again. Of course it's protected. Alright, let's see if we can't take this guy. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Okay, that guy did a lot of damage. A lot. Holy smokes. And then this thing... Ugh. And it, you can't attack this while it's on you normally. Okay. Whew, that's gone. This is quite chaotic. I honestly wish I... Like, you guys watching, like, you can, you can see, but... It is quite the chaos going on right now. With... Between audio and, like, everything else. It is quite something. Holy smokes. Let's see if we can get them down here. Trying to get them down here. Oh, he's got to he's got to come up this way. Ooh. That's going to get me killed. Okay. We've got to got to get a move on. Whoo! Crazy, crazy, crazy. That is for sure. Ooh, I wonder what's in these pipes. Oh, these are kind of cool looking. Just a bunch of sand though. Doesn't really look like a whole lot. Wow, oh, there's a lot of blazes. Just so much noise. That is the thing that is going on. It's just so 
much. Holy smokes. All right, that guy's gone and come on. One more and that guy's gone. I have no idea what these are. Skilled blazes. Maybe I can go up and Woo! take so many hits, even with a normal sword. Wow. I almost want to try the sage. I ended up warping back to this location. It's a little bit easier. These guys should leave me alone. Whew. My goodness. Oh, is this... It's so different, too. The fortress is completely different than normal. At least a few things are the same, such as there's still spawners, which is really nice. And I wonder if we can modify those spawners where they lie with apotheosis. It's so long as we don't pick them up. Because I think if we pick them up, we start to encounter some other problems. Such as uh, the spawners have a limited amount of uh, of mob spawns it can do before it ends up breaking. Look how sad this poor fella is. Why are they keeping you in there? <laughs> what have you done to deserve such things? Oh man, the atrocities that guy must have inflicted on this hellscape. It's got to be, it's, it had to have been bad. Now that fella over there is something I would love to take out because it could potentially drop some really good gear, that it being a, an epic fighter, an epic boss. I should be able to potentially get the high ground here. Ooh, we have a regular skeleton shooting at me. A lot of everything is shooting at me, to be fair. Okay, maybe I can get over here. Holy smokes. Oh, not what I wanted. Let's get rid of you. And I think the Wither Skeleton is gone. This guy is in what looks to be full diamond gear. And I don't think my arrows are even budging. Yeah, I don't think I have a chance. It do It is doing a little bit. It's doing a little bit, actually. Oh, well, well, now he's dead. Uh, darn. Yep, believe it or not, this is a very small fortress. Like, I mean, very small. I have no idea why, but it is. Now, I want to get into more enchanting. Goodness, after, after going there and realizing, well, I'm just not prepared with my base enchants. Um, and, uh... I think we can upgrade now, but I do need to kill some gas. So I have a spell here and I don't know if this is going to work very well, but gas have a problem. When you kill a gas, it is kind of a pain to get the drops to not fall directly into lava. That is kind of a problem with gas. So I'm thinking that maybe I can use the spell with a projectile harm and then amplify and then a pickup and it should pick up the mob drops after it kills the mob. Uh, so I, I think. So let's test this out. Will it work? Oh boy. That's if I can even hit the thing. Let's activate this. I need my lunch box. Oh man. Even with the simulation distance fixed, I can't seem to see the gas. Okay. It like just disappears occasionally. Let's see, it's going that way. Oh, I just barely missed. Okay, we did a little damage. It's so hard to hit this thing. Okay, yeah. This is uh, turning out to be quite the endeavor. Just to get a single shelf. What even? Okay, apparently I killed it, but I don't even know if it dropped a guest here. Oh! Oh my gosh. Might be better just to kill it with a bow. Whoo! The nether is freaking awful, man. Oh, thank goodness. I don't know where they... If it came from me just killing it or what, but we did get five gas tiers somehow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I am, I am ready to get out of here. You know, with the nether being incredibly difficult like it is at the moment, I almost wonder, is the overworld still worth exploring more and finding more things? Like, will I benefit from looting the overworld? That's what I want to know. Maybe you guys can let me know down in the comments below 
uh, if you have been playing through this, is it beneficial to explore and loot the buildings that are still here in the overworld that we haven't explored? Because uh, I, I just don't want to just keep looting over and over and ruining my diamond gear that I have to then go mining for to repair when it's just going to prompt me with more leather armor that just... Man, it just feels bad when that's what you get is the loot, you know? I mean, the nether does seem pretty good. We did get this. Oh, man. This tool breaks in a one by three area. So mining just got a little bit easier. And it also has a socket. And I can uh, use a socket to increase its mining speed even further. I guess that would be a good example of the actual mining speeds and how they work. Um, so this is attack damage. We do have crystals that give us mining speed which i think it's these yeah so we do have one that's like total mining speed this is a 25 total mining speed 20 20 i mean that's pretty good that's a 24 mining speed this is like the best mining speed we have and to apply this we just use it in an anvil i believe i think i think this with the sockets you use an anvil maybe not maybe it is a smithing table it might be a smithing table. Let's test it out on the smithing table. And yeah, there it is. Uh, it does prompt me with that. Okay. So this will give us 25 mining speed. This also has 18% armor negation as a weapon. That's not that great. It already has an 11% base mining speed and a little bit extra reach. But now we have the extra 25. And then that combined with efficiency, this might be a really good pick. So long as we can enchant it, which I'm going to have to work on making some regeneration potions so guys with that i'm gonna have to call it here it has been a fantastic episode and uh well i got quite a bit done i am super super duper excited to see what uh this broom brings as we do some more exploring out in the wild because i think the best use case for this is exploring here in the overworld wow how much nicer is this going to be i'm excited but anyways guys I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a good old thumbs up as well. I would really appreciate that. And guys, it is time now to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to Flat Lucozaid. Thank you so much for your amazing support by supporting me over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member. Guys, thank you so, so very much. For all of your tremendous support and thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys in the next one and as always yet again thanks for watching nothing's better than flying my broom around in the golden hour oh how nice